are there. I mean, here we go now to something that's like utterly purely abstract or conventionalized. It really isn't, when you know what the subject is, you will begin to see that in fact it's actually very close to a, an actual representation. This is called birth of Hydra. Hydra has two meanings. Hydra was the mythical beast of Athens in Greek mythology that had the nine heads, and for every head that you cut off, two grows in its place. Um, it is also the name of a microscopic organism that we find in our streams. It's a hydrozoa. And um, this here actually resembles that <coughs> hydrozoa. In, in, in essence, it is sort of an abstracted form of the little hydra. And, and if, if you all feel like it, when you go home, look it up on Wikipedia. It's a, it's, the hydra is really like a little tube, like a, almost like a, um, uh, like a squid almost with tentacles that come out. And it has the same regenerative process that for every arm that gets cut off, more grow in its place. I'm not sure if it's two, but, um, but what happens here is this is a polychrome resin, which is, um, uh, it is something that was developed by Maxfield Parrish, uh, who was an artist back in the turn of the century, which has to do with painting, layer of resin, painting, layer of resin, painting, layer of resin, maybe a dozen or so times. What that does is, is that as the light goes into the painting, it reflects and comes back out. So each layer of paint, sometimes there might be a green, above it might be rose matter. And what it's really doing is it's mixing the colors for you on the palette, so that, or on the, on the substrate. So as the light comes up, it's actually creating the color that, rather than me mixing it on a palette, just wiping over it, it's actually happening in the process of diffraction of, of light. So this piece here, and you can kind of see undertones in here, um, it's this process. And on top of it, all the tentacles are in this resin that have been tinted. The resin is water-based, the oil is added to it, and we all know from chemistry that oil and water do not mix. So what happens is, is that there's a breakdown, they don't actually fuse, and it creates a very sparkly sort of effect, because what you're really looking at is the air bubbles that are really in there. And again, if you come up and just sort of look, you'll be able to see all of this. Um, <clears throat> it's interactive in that there's also a, an added bonus to this in that it fluoresces. So like microscopic organisms, bioluminescence, um, if you charge this with a black light huh. for about a good 30 minutes or so, at night when the sun sets below the horizon, this glows and comes to light. And it's not very dark right now, but if we can, um, let's see if we can get a little bit of charge out of this. You may have to come a little closer, but can you see, yeah. can you see some of this over here? Um, there, there's a whole series of, the, the hydra itself will glow. Um, this is not, I don't want to confuse this. It's not glow in the dark paint. This is, a fluorescent, <laughs> this is a fluorescent that is actually added to the resin, to the mixture. Um, I don't know if you can see all these little spots. And I know you've seen photographs now where there's the microscopic world that actually comes to light mm -hmm. in that you see all these little figures and, and, and behind them there are all these little antibodies and things that are floating. It's also, in a way, not only micro, but a macro version of the universe as well. And I know that Hubble, the Hubble telescope has done the same thing. I mean, it's shown us the same type of, of, of uh, organism, really, that sort of exists, so that it really is meant to be one and the same. So, um, so that's the extreme end. And then um, probably over here, almost all of these are variations on themes. Um, there, there's a lot of traditional work in here. Um, what I find very fascinating for me, though, is our works that don't necessarily always connect the dots for people, and that I let you connect the dots. So if you look at the more modern pieces, like this is Emergence, this is a birth of a gemstone, um, you really can sort of interpret it many ways that you want, um, but it really is it's the act of creation, it's the act of pain. It, because anything that goes through this amount of pressure, the Earth in particular, whether you choose to believe <coughs> that geology and geological formations are inanimate or not, there's still a lot of pressure that sort of goes through. And 
And that's really what I'm trying to create here is this, you see all the cracks and the fissures of the plates and, and this formation of, of an oval, really, that's what's coming out. And um, of course, there's all the little niceties in there like sparkly filaments and so forth that kind of belie the fact of what possibly will be coming out. So, um, and I think probably maybe I'll end it on this last piece over here, which is, um, this is called the Parish Oak, which again, Maxfield Parish. Um, he's, he, he's an artist that I've, I've, I've uh, been very impressed with and obviously try to emulate in, in, in my work. Again, another polychrome resin. This is an opaque polychrome resin, which what it does is it, it solidifies and it, it denses, but at the same time, it's very tactile when you, when you touch this. It's really meant to be representative of the oak trees that he's done in a lot of his paintings. And uh, if you've ever seen an original parish, when he shows his trees, he always focuses on the lower third of a tree. It's the root base that connects to the earth. It's this whole connection of earth. And so, um, and so that's what I'm doing here. But more importantly though, again, is this, this bioluminescent mix that has sort of been placed within the substrate of, 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 the, uh, of the medium itself. So. Um, I guess that's it if you have any questions. You just, uh, Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. Let's everybody have a drink. Meander around. If you want to talk to him individually, be my guest.